Finally this week, could radiation from deep space be driving climate change? It's been a popular argument for years on the blogs of climate skeptics. High-energy cosmic rays plunge through the atmosphere all the time. As they do so, they alter its chemistry. They can create small particles that might help clouds to form. Clouds cool things down, so lots of cosmic rays, more clouds, cooler climate. But there's a missing link in all of this. Do cosmic rays really lead to those first seeds? To find out, Jasper Kirkby is conducting an experiment using simulated cosmic rays from a particle accelerator. I called him to learn more about his study of the cosmic climate connection. How do clouds affect climate? If you're sunbathing and a cloud goes overhead, then it gets colder. So they, what they do is they reflect the sunlight and that cools the surface. And it's a very big effect, actually. The net effect of all clouds on Earth is, roughly speaking, 30 watts per square meter of cooling. All of the anthropogenic contribution is estimated to have added about one and a half watts per square meter over the 20th century. So you can see that a very small systematic change in the amount of cloud cover could have a very big uh, correction on our understanding of what the radiative forcing is on the atmosphere. We have to understand clouds. And underneath clouds, it really implies aerosols behind them. So how exactly do cosmic rays create aerosols? There would be no clouds whatsoever in the sky if there weren't what are known as cloud condensation nuclei. And these are particles of order 100 nanometer in size or bigger. Those are the seeds on which clouds form. They're very, very important climatically because clouds are important climatically. And they have two basic sources. One of them is so-called direct aerosol, which are particles of dust or sea spray. But roughly about half arrive from the condensation of very, very minute amounts of condensable vapors in the atmosphere. And this is so-called nucleation. So this is a very important process. And this is what we're studying in cloud. So take me through this experiment. Tell me what it looks like. The concept is very, very simple. We have a large chamber, which we fill with ultra pure air and selected trace gases and water vapor. And we in that way, create a chosen air parcel, okay? And we set the temperature of the chamber very precisely to a certain part of the altitude. And then we expose the chamber to the certain particle beam. We change the intensity of the particle beam from zero all the way up to uh, cosmic ray intensity corresponding to the top of the atmosphere. And we then continuously sample the contents of the chamber by extracting small quantities of gas And in this way, we can exactly control the ionization in this case, the intensity of the cosmic rays going through the chamber, and we can see exactly what the cause is and what the effect is on the contents of the chamber. Tell me what you found. I mean, have you found evidence for for a lot of uh, aerosol nucleation then? Well, there's several observations that we've made. In this first round of experiments, we've taken the vapors that were thought to be responsible for essentially all of nucleation particle formation in the atmosphere, namely sulfuric acid, ammonia, and water vapor. Um, One of the big surprises is we found that these can't explain what's going on with particle formation in the lower atmosphere. Now, the second thing that we found is that for all the particle formation that we've looked at so far, cosmic rays substantially enhance the production rate of these particles by up to a factor of 10 at natural cosmic ray levels. But it's important to stress that we're only looking at the moment at the production of nanometer-sized embryonic particles. These are far too small to seed cloud droplets at this stage. So at the moment, it, it actually says nothing about a possible cosmic ray effect on clouds and therefore climate, but it's a very important first step. You know, I was doing a little Googling around on you before I uh, came down here, and I found a surprising number of your talks posted on climate skeptic websites. I mean, has it been unexpected to find yourself sort of on these sites and being discussed? People are far too polarized. And in my opinion, there's huge important areas where our understanding is poor at the moment. And the cloud results on aerosol nucleation are part of that. As I say, we don't even know what the vapors are that are involved, let alone the nucleation rates. What's the one thing that you would want people to take away from your your findings today, then? 
at the end of the experiment, we want to see whether or not cosmic rays have a significant effect on clouds. To do that, we won't have a single measurement that will be a smoking gun. There's a series of measurements that we will have to do, or we plan to do with cloud, that will take at least five years and could be as long as 10 years. But at the end of it, we want to settle it one way or the other. Well, I, I'm sure the blogosphere isn't willing to wait 10 years or even five for the answer, but um, we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Jasper Kirkby from CERN. That's all we've got time for this week. Next time, we're up all hours with the 24-7 lab and pondering the existence of free will with a little help from neuroscience. I'm Kerry Smith. And I'm Jeff Brumfield. Free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> <laughs>